on our YouTube channel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it should be that. Hare Krishna, everybody. Thank you for coming. <laughs> I try to speak today on uh, Bhagavad Gita, but uh, before I start, we're gonna sing Jai Radha Madhava. And if you guys uh, don't know the song, we have uh, the shits in there in the audio room. Would you, any of you, like to to get a shit? Should I wait for you? Should I wait, wait for you to, to clean up? Yeah. No, no, you can Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Madhava Kunja Vihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Jaya Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Vardhari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Vardhari Jaya Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Vardhari Yashoda Nandana Vrajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Vrajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hare. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hare. Jayam Vishnu, Vishnu Para Paramahamsa Parivraja Kacharya, Astotra Shata Shri Shimate Sibhakti Vranta Swami, Prabhupada Ki Jai, Yiskan Fano Acharya Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Jayam Vishnu Para Paramahamsa Parivraja Kacharya, Astotra Shata Shri Shimad Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj Prabhupada Ki Jai, <coughs> Jai Shri Rupa Sanatana Bhatt, Raganath Shri Jiva Gopala Bhadas Raganath Sadga Swami Prabhu Ki Jai Namacharya Shri Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Premisa Ko Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopinath Shri Amakunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhan Ki Jai Shri Maya Purdam Ki Jai Shri Vindavan Dham Ki Jai Ganga Maya Ki Jai Yamuna Maya Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Tulasi Devi Ki Jai, Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai, Grantara Shimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai, Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai, Gaur Premananda Hari Hari Bo, all glories to assembled devotees, Hare Krishna, all glories to the assembled devotees, Hare Krishna, all glories to the assembled devotees, Hare Krishna, all glories to Shri Shri Guru, and Shri Gauranga, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Namon Vishnu Paraya Krishna Prishtayam Tule Shimadhi Chitana Chandra Charam Prabhu Tinamaya Namaste Dhanam Tulam Kram Chandra Kuro Chara Siva Prabhu Paham Om Namon Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namon Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Oops. Hare Krishna, my name is Bhakti Dimitri. I live here in the ashram and today we're going to speak on Bhagavad Gita chapter number 3, text 26. The chapter is called Karma Yoga. So I'll recite the Sanskrit in the beginning. Actually, I'll say the prayers first. Uh, Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakya Chakshurun Militam Hinatasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manubhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadachi Swapadantikam Vanchakop Drubhishya Kripa Sundhu Vyeva Chapatita Nam Pavane Bio Vaishnave Binamon Maha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shiva Sarigur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Okay, so text number 26. Na buddhi bedam janayet, agyanam karma sanginam, joshyat sarva karmani vidvan yukta samacharan. Na, the synonyms na, not, buddhi bedam, disruption of intelligence. Jana yet he should cause agyanam of the foolish, karma sanginam who attached to the footy work, josha yet he should dovetail, sarva all, karmani work, vidvan a learned person, and yuktiha engaged, samacharan practicing. Translation and comments by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai. So as not to disrupt the minds of ignorant men attached to the fruit of results or prescribed duties, a learned person should not induce them to stop work. 
rather by working in a spirit of devotion, you should engage them in all sort of activities for the gradual development of Krishna consciousness. Purport. Vedas cha sarvair aham eva vedya. That is the end of all Vedic rituals, uh, which means um, by all Vedas I'm, I am to be known. That's what Krishna says in the 15th chapter. So all rituals, all performances, sacrifices, and everything that is put into the Vedas, including all direction for material activities, are meant for understanding Krishna, who is the ultimate goal of life. But because the conditioned souls do not know anything beyond sense gratification, they study the Vedas to that end. But through fruitive activities and sense gratification regulated by the Vedic rituals, one is gradually elevated to Krishna consciousness. Therefore, realize soul and Krishna consciousness should not disturb others in their activities or understanding, but you should act by, sh uh, by showing how the results of all work can be dedicated to service of Krishna. The learned Krishna conscious person may act in such a way that the ignorant person working for sense gratification may learn how to act and how to behave. Although the ignorant man is not to be disturbed in his activities, a slightly developed Krishna conscious person may directly be engaged in the service of the Lord without waiting for all the Vedic formulas. For this fortunate man, there is no need to follow the Vedic rituals because by direct Krishna consciousness, one can have all the results one would otherwise derive from following one's prescribed duties. So, <clears throat> human life is meant for cultivation of spiritual knowledge and his relationship to Krishna. And uh, if you look at the exec executive heads, the leaders of society, they are obliged to teach us this knowledge by um, um, education, um, social means, and also by service. And uh, it's a very unique opportunity for us to be in this human form of life. It's um, such a rare opportunity that in a, in a Vedic um, opinion, it is described, Srila Prabhupada describes this as a, if you look at the ocean, and if there's a flock of wood floating on the ocean with a hole in it, and the torches swimming, and the chances that we're gonna get a human life are so rare that this, it's compared to a torches coming at the exact moment to just pick the head out through that hole. That's how rare the human life is. So we should definitely uh, have appreciation and spend this life wisely. <laughs> and in this, of course, Bhagavad Gita is, is such a tremendous, amazing book that can help us in this regards. And uh, the leaders are not exactly teaching us the Vedic injunctions, although if you, for instance, um, uh, look at India, for example, the family tradition is still kept, and you know you still get this opportunity to uh, to be taught this 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 Krishna consciousness in within the family, even though if you go to school, it might not be so. You know, even in in India these days. So this knowledge is known as aprosheya. It means the superhuman knowledge, knowledge that is uh, completely transcendental. And um, Vedic instructions should be accepted as they are without any uh, interpretation. You know, Bhagavad Gita, um, Srimad Bhagavatam, we should not try to interpret it to our own um, understanding and means because as uh, Srila Prabhupada describes in the introduction to Shishu Panishad, he says that you know, we can't rely on our senses. Even you know, the, the, the objects that um, we see every day, such as the sun, for instance, it's, it's not perceived to us as it truly is, so we can um, interpret anything with our um, imperfect senses. So we accept this um, as it is in a disciplic succession, and that succession started a long time ago, and the Vedas compared to the mother, and, and the Brahma, the first living entity, who uh, got the instructions, is compared to the father, and then eventually he um, imparted the knowledge to his um, disciple, Narada Muni, and Narada taught it to Vyasadev, and all the way through different uh, disi disciples and teachers, uh, it got down to Srila Prabhupada, and now uh, we also uh, can be, if, of course, if we're practicing Krishna consciousness sincerely and following the vows and regulations, we can also be connected to that uh, bona fide sampradaya and be connected to a succession that's been followed since Krishna, since the words of Krishna, you know. 
So this chapter is called Karma Yoga. And um, in overall, it deals with what stops people from fully dedicating themselves in this path of Krishna consciousness, which is known as Kama or last. And, and Krishna uh, talks about this in, in, a, in a few last texts of this, of this chapter. But in the beginning, Arjuna is confused. He's, he's asking Krishna whether he should renounce his activities in an action or whether he should try to perform his prescribed duty, which is called um, Nishkarma Karma Yoga. And um, the Krishna says that it's, it's, it's best if you engage in, in devotional service. Because if you try to be renounced at the um, inappropriate time, you can actually be still a, a, attached to the sense objects, and eventually you'll fall, fall down. And uh, performing your activities is much better than not working, since the, you know, the mind is always active, and uh, we can't really just be... Uh, in a complete state of you know inactivity, it's just it's not natural for us. We have to do something. We have to be engaged. That's why the the Krishna consciousness, the services are. Uh, when Srila Prabhupada came, he he just wanted to keep devotees busy. You know that's that's we we distribute books. We have so many things that we can do around the ashram. Because by nature, if you are trying to get this purification, get through this process of purification, you got you you have to be doing something. You know, and. Um, also in this chapter, Krishna says how by sacrifice we can um, please Lord Vishnu and cooperate with demigods, which who are uh, the administrators of different affairs of Krishna, and they supply air and, and light to water to human beings. They actually help us in maintaining the bodies, different organs, and even the soul. So if we perform yagya, perform sacrifice, we can place the demigods, and in return, uh, we can live uh, um, in happiness. But ultimately, in this age, as is pro all of you probably know, the, the most appropriate sacrifice is Sankirtan Yagya, which is um, congregational singing of the holy name, which is the most powerful uh, process for self-realization. <clears throat> if we come together to sing the holy name, it's... Uh, I've heard in some classes that at some point we we may even attract the demigods to, to come and, and participate partake in that in that kirtan. You know, of course, it's if it's if it's done very purely. You know, so the the uh, results, the fruits of our sacrifice are directly enjoyed by Krishna. And sometimes we might we might worship a demigod for a particular reason, like uh, um, you know. Ladies might worship Lord Shiva to get a husband, you know, or we might worship uh, uh, Lord Ganesh to if we if we have some um, tribulations in life, if we want to go through obstacles, if life is a little difficult for us. But ultimately, even if we do so, um, everything comes to Krishna, and the sanctions are also being uh, given by Krishna Himself directly. And in this regard. Um, and there's a text in the Bhagavad Gita which goes as uh, Bhaktaram Yagya, Yagya Tapasa Sarvaloka Maheshwaram Suhridam Sarva Bhutanam Gyatva Mam Shantirichiti. It means that all the um, results of austerities and sacrifice are enjoyed by Krishna. And he is the one who um, is in control of the demigods and all the uh, heavenly planets. And he's the ultimate beneficiary for all living entities. So you can see sometimes that one might be um, very qualified for re, uh, um, renunciation when you know, the, the devotee becomes uh, purified and he becomes uh, completely um, self-realized. But even though it is so, in the, in the, in the Bhagavad Gita, it's, it's still not recommended to give up your activities completely. And even though you might be um, um, completely pure and self-realized, you should still set an example for other people to follow. Just like um, in many cases in the Shastra, we can see even Krishna and Balaram, when they returned to Matra, they, they also been, uh, um, they accepted a spiritual teacher, um, Sanjipani Muni, and they were taught for 64 days how to follow the principles of Brahmacharya and how to you know, they learn how to sing and how to uh, 
uh, dance and how to cook and how to make garlands. They even studied psychology and they learned uh, uh, the art of the languages. They, they participated in all these activities. And uh, they were given a, 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 a Brahman threat, you know, a sacred threat. So even Krishna, even though he has absolutely nothing uh, of the desires in, this, in, you know, in, in, in the world, and he has no prescribed duty to perform, he still uh, gives us an example. He shows by example how we should be acting. And uh, following acharyas, following um, our teachers, is one of the ways to progress in, in, in Krishna consciousness. And the most effective way to, um, to progress is to accept a spiritual teacher, and it's described in the fourth chapter. Tadvidhi pranipateina priprashnena sevaya Krishna says that just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master and, and try to inquire from him submissively, render services unto him. And the self-realized uh, person will impart knowledge unto you because he's seen the truth. So this text actually breaks down four most effective ways to um, learn anything in life, be that you know spiritual science or any other science. First of all, we should need to um, find somebody who's expert at a certain thing. And uh, for instance, if we want to be successful in, uh, in marriage, we should find somebody uh, who's, uh, who has a big family and who's a very you know, successful husband and inquire from him. So that's the, 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 the teacher has to be an expert. And he has to be Dattva Darshana. And the second one, uh, we should uh, show some uh, respect. It's, it's called pranipat. We should be serious and we should show respect to that teacher. Because if we're not serious at um, learning a certain process, a certain practice, and if we're just uh, not taking it seriously, then the knowledge will not go into the heart. It's just that the learning will not take place. And then the next one is um, submissive inquiries, which is called uh, pariprashnena. It's a desire to actually understand something. And that understanding, that desire, it's, uh, it also should be serious. It shouldn't be just, uh, you know, like an example, like if you want to go to, to India, for instance, you, you may ask somebody, how do I go to India? And the person can tell you, well, you just buy a ticket and you just fly. And you're just satisfied. Okay, well, I can do that. But actually, you should, you should inquire more in details. You know, you should say, you should ask, well, wh what, what am I going to do there if I, if I come to any, where, where will I stay? What, do I, what am I going to eat? Where, where would I go? What, who am I going to meet? So all these details sh should be considered when you are trying to, to learn something. So that's, that's the, third, the, the third one, Pariparshnena. And, and the last one is Sevaya, which is uh, service. So we should uh, be um, um, putting this knowledge, this information that we learn into practice. For instance, when you're learning how to drive a car, you know, you might study the theory and you might understand that these are the stops to follow, these are the, you know, the turns to take. But then you have to uh, put it into practice and realize, put that realization, that work, the practical work. So th these are the four very effective things that can help us um, to uh, learn anything in life. And besides this text, I'm actually going to look into the commentaries, the idea of this text is that um, we should not disrupt people who are attached to uh, different material things and who might not be very much interested or inclined to practice in Krishna consciousness or matter of fact any devotional life, but we should be able to inspire them by, um, by bhakti or by engaged in bhakti. Because if you look at, um, for instance, jnana yoga, you have, to be, you have to undergo some sort of purification in order to, to practice it. Um, that requires purity of heart. So not everybody would be qualified to actually you know, st you know, study analytically you know, the Vedas. It's, it's, it might not be possible for some people. But if, you, if we're talking about bhakti yoga, the process is so strong that anybody who has an inclination can partake and get the benefit. And that benefit is much greater than, than of any other processes. So engaging people in Krishna's services is very pleasing to, to Krishna. 
He says in the Bhagavad Gita, he says that uh, the, dear, the most the dearest people to me are those who preach the message of, of, of Krishna consciousness and those who engage for the people in, in, in services. So we should try to do that. We should, try, we, should, we should try to be in that mode. And sometimes we meet people or we talk to people who might be um, completely disinterested in, 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 in any spiritual practices. And that's okay, you know, we just, we, did, we didn't get the, the um, um, uh, causeless mercy. <laughs> we didn't perform any, any punya, any, any, any good deeds in the past. My, yeah, that might be the case. So in, in this, we, just, we should just understand that those people are, they still qualify to, to, to participate. But at this point, they just, the fact that by material nature, which covers their real intelligence, and... Uh, if they associate with a sadhu, if, if they um, unwillingly perform a, 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 a yagya, a sacrifice, they, they can also, um, with time, uh, graduate into bhakti. In the fourth chapter, text number 10, Srila Prabhupada explain, explain, it actually it's mentioned originally in, in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sinhu, he mentioned that in the beginning, if a person have a desire to, un to understand self-realization, to understand who he is, if he is uh, a little, at least a little bit inquisitive, he can uh, uh, be inspired by Krishna in the heart to get the right association, to find the right association, to find to find Krishna conscious devotees, and then after this he will take the initiation by a spiritual teacher. Because if you're serious on your path, Krishna will always reciprocate and send you a spiritual spiritual teacher. And after initiation, you, you engaged in, in the instructions of the spiritual teacher, you engage in, in service. And of course, your service might not be steady and not, might, might not be perfect, but at least you're getting close to, to this loving experience, loving relationship with Krishna. And ultimately, it all ends in complete, pure, um, unwavering, un, um, um, undeviated love for Krishna and service to, to Krishna, because it would be just very um, spontaneous. You spontaneously would, would like to you know, have do something pleasing to Krishna, so that's that's called prema. That's uh, that's that's the goal of of uh, uh, Krishna consciousness, actually. And um, we can see that <coughs> devotees uh, they are very uh, merciful. They're like a, an ocean of mercy, and they they. Uh, uh, sukha dukkha dukhi. They are always happy when uh, they see other people happy, and they hey, they're sad when other people are sad, or at least they they try to be compassionate like this. And uh, they they the friend, they the best friend of all living entities. And Srila um, Prabhupada always wanted devotees to spread this Krishna consciousness and 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 participate in in book distribution. That's that's a very uh, enlivening activity. And uh, some of the devotees and myself, we try to um, part partake in that activity. And you get a very um, uh, good opportunity to spread Krishna consciousness to people. And uh, there's a few things I can say about the service, but I don't think we have much time <laughs> left. So I'm just going to end here and see if you guys have any, any questions. <laughs> I'm sorry that the class is a little short. But I uh, hope you guys maybe can uh, ask something, questions, if you would like to. Can you repeat the four, there were four things? Yeah. So the first one is um, that we need to find a, a bona fide expert, expert, guru who is an expert. And then the, the, the second one is we need to have respect and seriousness in our practice. The, the third one is is we um, we need to we need to um, sh um, submissively inquire from from the guru and then put it into practice put it into practice and uh, all these things you you, you have to com you know, combine all those things that's the instruction that the Bhagavad Gita the text is tadvidhi pranipatena pariparshnena sevaya padakshinti tegyanam gyanastatva darshana this is the fourth uh, fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for for listening. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. Hare Krishna.